HR Basics is a series of short courses designed to highlight what you need to know about a particular human resource management topic. In today's HR Basics, we explore the Fair Labor Standards Act, known as the FLSA. The Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA, establishes a minimum wage, overtime pay, record-keeping, and child labor standards. The Wage and Hour Division, or WHD, of the U.S. Department of Labor, known as the DOL, administers and enforces the FLSA with respect to private employment, state and local government employment, and federal employees of the Library of Congress, U.S. Postal Service, Postal Rate Commission, and the Tennessee Valley Authority. All employees of certain enterprises having workers engaged in interstate commerce, producing goods for interstate commerce, or handling, selling, or otherwise working on goods or materials that have been moved in or produced for such commerce by any person are covered by the FLSA. Special rules apply to state and local government employment involving fire protection and law enforcement activities, volunteer services, and compensatory time off instead of cash overtime pay. Let's look at four primary areas of compliance with the FLSA, minimum wage, overtime pay, record keeping, and child labor standards. Covered, non-exempt workers are entitled to a minimum wage of $7.25 per hour, effective July 24, 2009, at the federal level. Many states also have minimum wage laws. In cases where an employee is subject to both state and federal minimum wage law, the employee is titled to the higher minimum wage. Tipped employees are individuals engaged in occupations in which they customarily and regularly receive more than $30 a month in tips. The employer may consider tips as part of wages, but the employer must pay at least $2.13 an hour in direct wages. The employer, who elects to use the tip credit provision, must inform the employee in advance and must be able to show that the employee receives at least the applicable minimum wage with direct wages and the tip credit allowance combined. If an employee's tips combined with the employee's direct wages of at least $2.13 per hour do not equal the minimum hourly wage, the employer must make up the difference. Covered, non-exempt employees must receive overtime pay for hours worked over 40 hours in a work week at a rate of not less than one and one-half times the regular rate of pay. There's no limit on the number of hours employees 16 years or older may work in any work week. The FLSA does not require overtime pay for work on weekends, holidays, or regular days of rest unless overtime is worked on such days. The Act applies on a workweek basis. The employee's workweek is a fixed and regularly reoccurring period of 168 hours, seven consecutive 24-hour periods. It need not coincide with a calendar week, but may begin on any day and at any hour of the day. Different work weeks may be established for different employees or groups of employees. Averaging of hours over two or more weeks is not permitted. Normally, overtime pay earned in a particular work week must be paid on the regular payday for the pay period in which the wages were earned. Deductions made from wages for items such as cash or merchandise shortages, employer-required uniforms, and tools of the trade are not legal to the extent that they reduce the wages of employees below the minimum rate required by the FLSA or reduce the amount of overtime pay due under the FLSA. The FLSA contains some exemptions from these basic standards. Some apply to specific types of businesses, others apply to specific kinds of work. The exemptions apply only to white-collar employees who meet the salary and duties tests set forth in Part 541 regulations. The exemptions do not apply to manual laborers or other blue-collar workers who perform work involving repetitive operations with their hands, physical skill, and energy. 
employees may be exempt from overtime provisions if they meet three tests in regard to first, a salary level, second, a salary basis, and third, their job duties. Test one is the salary level test, where the employee must be paid a certain amount per week or bi-weekly, monthly, or annually. These amounts are actual payments and salary should not be prorated for part-time employees. Note that there have been recent changes in the levels of salaries for this test. Test two is the salary basis tests. Employees must receive a predetermined fixed salary that is not subject to reduction due to variations in quality or quantity of work performed, except for some very narrow specified circumstances. And the third test is the job duties test, the most complicated of the three. An employee must meet all of the criteria specified in one or more of the following tests, the executive, administrative, professional, computer, or outside sales job duties tests. The FLSA requires employers to keep records on wages, hours, and other items as specified in DOL record keeping regulations. Most of the information is of the kind generally maintained by employers in ordinary business practice and in compliance with other laws and regulations. The records do not have to be kept in any particular form and time clocks need not be used. With respect to an employee subject to minimum wage or minimum wage and overtime provisions, the following records must be kept. Personal information, including name, address, occupation, sex, birth date, if under 19 years of age. The hour and day when the work week begins. Total hours worked in each work day and each work week. Total daily or weekly straight time earnings. Regularly hourly pay rate for the week when overtime is worked. Total overtime pay for the work week. Deductions from or addition to wages. Total wages paid each pay period. And the date of employment and the pay period covered. Records required for exempt employees differ from those for non-exempt workers. Special information is required for home workers or for employees working under uncommon pay arrangement, for employees to whom lodging or other facilities are furnished, and for employees receiving remedial education. The FLSA child labor provisions are designed to protect the educational opportunities of minors and prohibit their employment in jobs under conditions detrimental to their health or well-being. The provisions include restrictions on hours of work for minors under 16 and lists of hazardous occupation orders for both farm and non-farm jobs declared by the Secretary of Labor to be too dangerous for minors to perform. Regulations governing child labor in non-farm jobs differ somewhat from those pertaining to agricultural employment. In non-farm work, as permissible job hours by age are as follows. Youth 18 years or older may perform any job, whether hazardous or not. Minors 16 and 17 may perform any non-hazardous job for unlimited hours and minors 14 and 15 years old may work outside school hours in various non-manufacturing, non-mining, non-hazardous jobs under the following conditions. No more than three hours on a school day, 18 hours in a school week, eight hours on a non-school day, or 40 hours in a non-school week. 14 is the minimum age for most work. However, at any age, minors may deliver newspapers, perform in radio, television, movie, or theatrical productions, work for parents in a solely owned or non-farm business. The FLSA provides important minimum wage, overtime pay, record keeping, and child labor provisions for employers in the United States.